Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. All right, with the wonders and signs. Now, when we went to the book of Revelation, we saw the Antichrist and the devils, the dragon, doing wonders and signs. And the people go, Ooh, ah. That's what the danger of signs and wonders. Now, when you see signs, Think 1 Corinthians 1.22, Jews require a sign. When you see a sign from now on in the Bible, to the close of the book, it's not for the church, it's not for Gentiles, it is for the Jews. Now, you say, well, here, the sign, you talk about Pharaoh. Well, who's on the other side of the land? Israelites. They're hearing about, they would hear, hey, did you hear that Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh again today? And I would, right now, would be, well, I wish they did it, now we're in more trouble. But they're going to get the word. And what God is doing before Pharaoh is doing for the Jews. Building them up. And made thee a God. A small j. Man can become a God. In the eyes of other men. And there are. There are many names I could mention. Probably take up the rest of this time. Mentioning names that become gods to people. Politics. Education. Careers. Religion. To Pharaoh and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So God, Moses is the God and Aaron is the prophet. And thou shalt speak all that I command thee. And there's been some times Moses has been lacking what God spoke to him. Moses, you better speak at all. And Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that he sends the children of Israel out of the land. That's what God wants. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs. Again, 2 Corinthians 12. Look at 2 Corinthians 12, 12. 2 Corinthians 12, 12. You get messed up if you don't get this. The church is not called by signs. 2 Corinthians 12, 12. My page is stuck. Truly the signs of an apostle were brought among you and all the patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. That's to the Jews. That's before the word of God was written. Yes, the apostles had signs and wonders. So the Jews would see, wow, you are called of God. What do we have today? We are called by wisdom. We have 66 books. It's for the Jews. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Now this is another trouble. This is a trouble that Calvinism will see. God has preordained Pharaoh to be damned to hell. So see, you see what God, he hardened Pharaoh's heart without Pharaoh having any chance. Well, we're going to read on. We're going to study the whole Bible. But right now, God is going to harden Pharaoh's heart because he knows what Pharaoh's going to do. Pharaoh still has a free will. And multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. For the Jews. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. Now how's that? I want you to go do this thing, but guess what? It's not going to happen. Not yet. Let's show a little patience. It will happen. That I, this is God, may lay my right hand upon Egypt. 
Well, later on, we will, in the church age, we find that Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father. And you got to wonder through the Bible right now, is that where Jesus Christ is today, though not born yet? Jesus Christ has always been. So I got to wonder, and I see enough of the hand of God, the right hand of God. I got to wonder, every time it mentions the right hand of, of God, that that's not Jesus Christ himself. Lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies. That's Israel, a nation under an army. Well, you know what? We should not join the army because, you know, God says thou shalt not kill. What do you do there? He's going to prepare Israel. You know what he's doing? He's toughening Israel. In the wilderness, he's going to toughen them because they're going into a land they're going to have to fight. And realize under their military commander named Joshua, they only lose one battle. That's it. Ai. And my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. All right, Pharaoh's not going to hearken unto you, verse 4. But you're coming out. There is a greater power than there is of Pharaoh. And that greater power will take you out. There's a greater power of the world today. But there's the greatest power of Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, coming and taking us out of here. Whether we die or we're alive. Jesus Christ will take us out of this world. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. So not only the Jews, but there are Egyptians. And when they come out of the land, we will see a mixed multitude. Well, who is that? That's the Egyptians. There are Egyptians that have believed on the holy God because what happened? When I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among you. So Pharaoh's not going to allow you out. Oh, but I'm going to let you out, says God. Don't think the world can stop you. It's not going to. Jesus said in his own word, Fear not him that can kill the body, but fear him that's able to kill the body and the soul. We've got greater power in God. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded, commanded them. So did they. They are obedient. And Moses was fourscore and eighty years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, eighty-three years old. Aaron was before Moses. So Aaron would not have had that kill the the, first, the fourscore baby, the, the male babies. He was already already alive by when that happened. So Aaron, according to this. When they say to kill the, the, the male children, Aaron would have been about, well, let's give it a year before that, let's give it two or three years old. What? Yeah, he's three years older than Moses. When Moses was born, Aaron would have been great. Right. Right. And where else do you see in the Bible about children two years and under? Here it is again. So, we learn the ages of these two brothers. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. That's what the Pharisees kept on. Show us a sign of heaven. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Chapter 4, verses 2 and 20. This is the third time this is going to happen. That rod becomes a serpent. Now we're going to attack now the god of Egypt called Apep. A-P-E-P. -P. He's a serpent. And it's funny how to the Egyptians that god means evil. Well, things haven't changed. And Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh. Now notice, Aaron cast down his rod. Aaron cast down his rod 
But when we go back to chapter 4, uh, verse 2, 4 verse 2, the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And verse 20, Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Alright? Let's go to Numbers 17 8. Numbers 17 8. See, with scripture, with scripture, you can learn things. 17a. And let's see. We'll look at one more verse. Verse 3. 17.3. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. 17a. And, and it shall come to pass that on the morrow. Moses went into the tabernacle with witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron, that's Aaron's rod, for the house of Levi budded, brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. Aaron's rod is being changed into a serpent. Here that he's holding is an almond branch. That's interesting. Almonds have white blossoms. Very white blossoms. They're beautiful. You can also find almonds in 43.11. Genesis 43.11, excuse me. Exodus 25.33 and 34. And that's picturing the candlestick in the holy place. 37.19, Numbers 33.46. Ecclesiastes 12, 5. Let's talk about old age. The white of the head. And then Jeremiah 1, 11. So Moses went unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, before his servants, and it became a serpent. Now to Pharaoh and the men, that's Haman. And that's exactly how he's drawn as a serpent. You can tell that drawing. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner. Same thing. With their enchantments. Unas, hookas, hookas, hookas. Epumas, humor, whatever. For they cast down every man his rod. And they became servants. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Notice how it's called a rod, even though it's a serpent. And Aaron's rod is brutal. The devil can give life, but he cannot create life. And I saw that I had this note somewhere. There's a snake called a king snake that will eat other snakes, including rattlesnakes. Interesting. Job tells us in Proverbs to study the animals, and they will speak the Bible. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has said. The magicians come in, and right away Pharaoh's heart is darkened. Notice how many times when these pharaohs, I mean, when these magicians step up to do their magic deeds, Pharaoh's heart will be hardened. Not once do these magicians give Pharaoh an activity light to God in the gospel. What's the gospel here? What's the good news? Pharaoh, listen to God and let them people out. Now see, we're not saved by that gospel. And you got to wonder, when, when Aaron picked up his rod, was it bigger and fatter? <laughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Like, yeah, I know God, God. <laughs> he didn't tell me that. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Type of second coming. Lo, he goeth out to the water. Chapter 2, verse 5. His daughter goes out to wash. He goes out to wash. And thou shalt stand by the river's bank against, in the way of, 
against Tikkun. They were just getting in the way of him coming to that water. And the rod which, the, which was turned to a serpent shall thou take in thy hand. So it's come back to be a rod again. It didn't stay as a serpent. And this is the place where Pharaoh, not this Pharaoh, but this is the Pharaoh before him, where having the babies drowned. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews, Jehovah, has sent me to thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness, and behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. You're not listening to me. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite the rod that is in my hand, Upon the waters which are in the river, Nile River, and they shall become blood, like the blood of the babies, crocodiles, hippopotamuses, and all kinds of rivers like that. They would seen those babies and chew them up in pieces for dinner. They're saying that I read in this time that the animal activity along this river was just vast, amount a lot. So. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying to Aaron, Take thy rod, stretch out thy hand upon the waters of Egypt, Nile River, and their streams, upon their rivers, upon the ponds, upon the ponds, I didn't realize, upon the ponds, upon all their pools of water. So see, they had pools back then for irrigation. And they might become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in the vessels of wood and the vessels of stone. The only miracle that, that doesn't show up that God showed Moses, that Moses showed the, 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 the elder, is the leprosy. We've gone from the rod to a snake, back to a rod, to the water turning to blood. There's no mention of the, of the leprosy. Now this God is Hapi, H-A-P-I. This is the God of the Nile. This would be the fish god, which we mentioned. The birds god, or the birds of the river. And this would be the god of the river itself, Nile. The plants, the reeds, all by the river. And this god was the floods. Because when the flood, when the floods of the Nile River flooded the area, which happened yearly, and with that flood would bring fertile, great soil to grow. So that was a god. And God said, I'll teach your God a lesson. Bow down, Dagon, which will come much later. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod, as God will lift up the rod upon Israel in Jacob's trouble. And smote the waters. He hits the waters that were in the river, in the sight of the Pharaoh. You do it right in the sight. And in the sight of his servants, not like his daughter. She had babies. He's got men around. She's got women around her. You don't want to see the nakedness. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. You find that in Revelation with Moses. The waters turned to blood. And, you know, um, oh boy, I need to name that. Elijah's like, that's a good one, Moses. You want me to see get rid of the water? Let there be no rain. And the blood that turns the water, and Elijah saying, no rain. Man, that just deathifies the land in the book of Revelation. There's no water to drink, and what there is to drink is blood. And the fish that was in the river died. There's that God, Hepi, Nile River, now the fish, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. What kind of blood? Real blood. How did it happen? That's a miracle. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. All right, wait a minute. The people could not drink of the water, so here comes the magician. Hocus, pocus, hocus, pocus, whatever he wants to do is in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, 
Water's turned to blood. You just added more blood to the nation of what Moses and Aaron already done. Wow. You're really stupid. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. You did not think that was going to happen. Here's the Egyptians. Here's the magicians. And Pharaoh's like, okay, if my people can do it, it ain't no miracle. You see that? If my people can do it, your God's not important. Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. I told you he was going to do that. I prophesied to you. He's not listening. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this heart. Neither did he set his heart. Did it say the Lord did it? No. He did it himself. And you're going to read back and forth. The Lord did it. Pharaoh did it. The Lord did it. Pharaoh. It's in Pharaoh's heart. He does not want to do this. He does not want to obey God. And God's like, okay, fine. I'll use that for my credit. I'll use that for my glory. And if you get somebody who harasses you, because you're a Christian, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus have suffered persecution. Realize, that guy wants to harass you. That guy wants to scorn you. He wants to mock you. And God says, you want to be so happy doing that? Yeah, I enjoyed it. All right, just keep on doing it, because I want to see how my people are going to do And that guy, in all his heart, and all your preaching, and all your gospel tracts, everything that you do, he may not, <coughs> he might not ever get right. And God may say, hey, he's there because I want him there for you. And not for good. Sometimes those scorners, those markers, those simpletons that show up in a public ministry are there because of God, and they want to be there. God did not force them to do it. And Pharaoh turned away into his house, did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians did round about the river for water. Wells. They're digging wells. Can we find some water? Round about the river to water to drink. For they could not drink of the water of the river. So they're trying, hopefully, inside that mud, inside that, in the dirt of that riverbed, can we find some good water? And that doesn't say they find it. They say they dig it. But doesn't say they find. And this would go for your water on your shelves in your plastic bottle. That will also turn to blood. God says. Like what? Said both in vessels of water. In vessels. Verse nineteen. And that they may become blood, that they may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt. But both in vessels of wood and vessels of stone, today we say plastic bottles. So if they're wells that they dug, their buckets from their wells, if, the bucket, if they left a bucket of water by their garden, they didn't use it. And they're, they're going, oh, okay, I'll get nothing. That's blood. And whatever the tribulation period is, whether it be plastic, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I'm not going to be there. You go to your store to get water, it's going to be all blood. And when you open it up, what does it say? It's going to stink. And I don't know where this blood comes from. I don't know where it comes from in Revelation either. But it said blood. What do I think it's going to be? It's going to be blood. And Moses is there doing it. Jesus turned water to wine. Which will become a type of his blood. And everybody thinks it's hooch. I'm sorry, the blood of Jesus Christ is not fermented. It cannot ever be fermented. And now I just read something today. There are places in America now, they are setting their laws aside so drink so churches can now have alcohol beverages. They're removing that order. How do you know there was orders that the church couldn't have? And I've been in, trying to start churches. I've dealt with insurance for churches where if you do serve alcohol, there's a special clause and policy for that if they go out and get drunk in the name of Jesus and crash with their car. I mean, and seven days were fulfilled, one week, after the Lord had smitten the river. And then 
Moses and Aaron go go at it again with Moses. It doesn't ever say that the water ever went back, or if it did, we don't know. Maybe it did. It's not blood today. We know that. That, that's the standard reading, but there are some who read it as all right, seven day. I mean, it could have been during the whole time of this whole thing going on, each of these plagues. Because you're going to start seeing flies showing up. The flies become come because of the dead fish. Now, if you see each of these things coming, it's a result from the previous one. Now, the, the fish, the dead piles of fish you'll see, they are still there. And they are in a desert uh, climate. They're going to start reeking. They're going to start stinking. Worse than the stinking now. We had one time they put fish in the garbage can by that stunk. So we're going to get into good things. 